Hi, I'm Emma. I wish I could come on here today and tell you all that I'm a survivor. A survivor of the disease with the highest mortality rate of any other mental illness. However, the truth is, I'm a fighter. I am a fighter because every day is still a battle against my own mind and the voices trying to bring me down. Today, I would like to give you an understanding of eating disorders and mental illnesses using my story. A story of pain, tears, fear, denial, acceptance, and finally, recovery. A story that is far from over, but that I have chosen to make public because I want to be able to help those who struggle like I do. So here goes my story. I grew up in a loving family with both of my parents and my two siblings. I loved sports. I took part in running, swimming, triathlon, rugby, flag football, I mean, basically everything. However, since a very young age, I felt a huge pressure to succeed. There was a voice inside my head telling me I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't worth it. My parents constantly told me that I was a very negative person. I mean, I had everything I needed to be happy. I was healthy, had a few friends, I was a good student. But to me, it was just never good enough. Quickly, I began struggling with anxiety. Sports were very important to me. They allowed me to release all of my stress and anxiety. Nevertheless, food quickly became another coping mechanism. I was only six years old when I started binging. I would secretly go to the kitchen, hide food underneath my clothes, and run back to my room. I remember the couple of times I was caught. I broke down and begged them not to tell my parents. I wasn't eating because I was hungry. I was eating because, for a few minutes, it gave me a sense of relief. I was able to breathe again, but afterwards, I always felt so much worse. When I turned eight, my family and I moved to Panama, and I arrived here, at the Met. In a new school, I really struggled to make friends, so instead, I focused on what I knew well and made me feel safe, sports. As I got older, sports became a huge part of my identity, and slowly, I started feeling like I belonged. Now, my sister and I are only one year apart, so as she started getting older, I started comparing myself to her, more and more. I've always had this feeling like she was better than me, and to tell you the truth, it really scared me. So I started to push myself, more and more. I got into competitive sports, and quickly, sports were no longer fun, but instead caused me so much stress and anxiety. I remember getting sick to my stomach before every swimming competition, and I begged my parents not to come. Now, you might be wondering, why would I want my parents to be there? Why would I want them to cheer for me like everyone else? The truth is, I was scared they would see me fail. I wanted to be the perfect child, the best swimmer out there. Because at the end of the day, the only thing I wanted was to make them proud. Fast forward to 2017. I was training twice a day while at the same time, school started getting more challenging. I would come home exhausted from training and then have to start working. I was taking on way too much and soon enough, the voices inside my head became so loud and the pressure I had been taking on just burst. I started binging and purging and exercising whenever I had the chance. Now, I know how hard it must be to understand. Like, why would somebody purposely make themselves throw up? Most of you guys probably think it's gross, but the truth is, binging and purging is an addiction. It's as if I was numb to the world and purging was the only thing that made me feel something. I think that the best way to describe it is that resisting the urge to purge when you have an eating disorder is like resisting the urge to use drugs for a drug addict. It's so exhausting, both mentally and physically, and some days you just don't have the strength to fight the urge. So instead, I isolated myself, kept on pushing, and I told myself I could do it. I told myself that I had it under control. My teachers and coaches were all proud of me. I was really good at pretending everything was okay. But after a few months, my parents started noticing my secretive behavior. They started noticing me rushing straight to the bathroom after dinner, taking hour-long showers, my hair falling out, and the huge bags underneath my eyes. So one night, they sat me down and confronted me about everything. As they spoke to me, I couldn't even look at them. I was so ashamed of myself, I wanted nothing more than to disappear. I will never forget that that night was the first time I thought about killing myself. The voices told me that I had failed and that I was nothing more than a disappointment. As time passed, I stopped purging. However, my relationship with food didn't get any better. I felt guilty after every meal and would only allow myself to eat if I was going to train afterwards. In May of 2018, I qualified to become a part of Panama's national triathlon team. However, due to all of the training and my inadequate diet, I injured myself. I had a stress fracture in my right leg 
and suddenly I could no longer exercise. I identified as an athlete, and to be told I could no longer exercise really scared me. That same month, one of my best friends moved away, and I was really lonely. On top of that, I was terrified for the next two years of high school I would soon have to face. That summer, things got bad. My depression completely took away my appetite, and suddenly, starving myself became so easy. I seemed to have a perfect life, or at least that's what I wanted everyone to see, because it's easier that way. It was easier to fake a smile than having to face all of my emotions and the pain I was truly feeling. In September, I was finally given permission to exercise again. However, I quickly realized I was not as good as I used to be. I tried convincing myself I was simply out of shape, but the truth was I was slowly deteriorating. I was struggling to keep up with basic training and I remember once in a while thinking, it's been two days, maybe I should eat something. But the voices inside my head quickly told me that I was fine because I had it under control. On October 8th, I woke up early to go to training. I was extremely lightheaded and I could barely feel my legs. As I got ready to jump onto my bike, my coach took me aside and this is when he told me the words I will never forget. He told me that I was not okay, that I had been brainwashed and that he refused to train an anorexic girl. Hearing those words absolutely broke me. The coach once believed in me, had completely lost hope in me and I was heartbroken. I was crying so much I could barely breathe and I remember thinking my entire world was falling apart. Sports had always been such a huge part of my life and once they were taken away from me I felt like a huge purpose of my life had been ripped away as well. At this point, I had control over nothing in my life other than school and food. And this is when things got bad. For the upcoming months, things got worse day after day. I was completely depressed and it was becoming so much harder to get out of bed in the morning. Starving myself had become a subconscious coping mechanism, which I used instead of having to feel all the pain I was truly in. By this point, my parents started becoming more controlling. But that's the thing about eating disorders. They're all about being in control. I like to think of my eating disorder as a toxic friend. A friend who always finds me when I'm alone, comforts me and cares for me when truly she just wants me dead. My eating disorder constantly fed me lies and without realizing it, I became completely obsessive. The dinner table became a battlefield, a constant battle between not eating and causing yet another argument. My parents shouting, crying, and my brother running upstairs to hide from the screams. I hated what I was doing to my family, but I couldn't stop. The voices were telling me that I didn't deserve to stop. I know this must sound so silly and you guys must be wondering, why didn't she just eat? The answer is that I couldn't eat. Imagine having a million voices telling you not to eat and screaming at you if you do. I was trapped and I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to live like this, but I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat because that would mean losing control. And after having lost control over everything that mattered to me, controlling my food was the only thing keeping me safe. By this point, my life had absolutely no meaning. I no longer felt like a person. I had become a problem. I was making my family suffer. My friends no longer wanted to be around me. And the only thing keeping me company was that voice inside my head. I had managed to isolate myself from absolutely everybody I loved and slowly, day by day, I was killing myself. In December, I was finally diagnosed with anorexia nervosa. I started seeing a team of doctors who made it clear that I was not okay. I made them believe that I was willing to get help, but the truth is, I was convinced I wasn't sick enough. My eating disorder was telling me I didn't deserve to get help and I hadn't finished making myself suffer. So I attended my appointments and decided to play along with the treatment program. I knew I needed to do things right because I wanted my parents to be proud of me. So I told the doctors exactly what they wanted to hear. Just like that, I made everybody believe I was actually getting better. However, my weight was still dropping. I was so scared I couldn't eat, but I needed to make them believe I was gaining weight. And so this is when I discovered that one kilogram is equivalent to one liter of water. I started drinking huge amounts of water before every weigh-in just to make them believe I was gaining weight. And it worked. Just like that, the number on the scale went up. I had entered this vicious cycle in which every time I had to get weighed, I needed to drink more water for the weight I had lost. I would drink up to 5 liters of water and would end up in pain and unable to move. But after all, the number on the scale went up and everybody was proud of me. But at this point, I wasn't only fooling my doctors. I was fooling myself. 
I was miserable and nobody knew what to do with me. I was constantly freezing, my hair was falling out in chunks, and my heart pains became so unbearable I would stick my nails into my chest just to distract me from the pain. But still, I was convinced that my doctors were trying to harm me. Every time a step was taken forward to help me, I would do everything in my power to break it down. I would throw my food away, flush my lunch down the toilet, go on secret runs, and even go to the gym after school. In March, doctors told me that I had gotten too weak and I needed to take some time off from school. I refused. I screamed at her and begged her to change her mind. I told her that absolutely everything in my life had been taken away from me already and the only thing I had left was school. But no matter how much I cried, they didn't change her mind. So I spent the next two weeks in bed, eating five meals a day which my parents supervised. Two weeks later, I seemed to be doing a bit better. I had gained some weight and my vitals had improved. My parents were proud of me, and I recall feeling like I was in control again. However, I remember coming back to school after two weeks and realizing nobody had noticed I'd been gone. Nobody came to greet me, and my friends walked past me as if I'd never left. I felt absolutely worthless. Realizing I didn't matter made my suicidal thoughts come back, and in just one month, I absolutely fell apart. So in May, I was hospitalized. My heart rate was dangerously low, and there was barely anything left of me. I felt like a complete failure. Why couldn't I just be normal? Why was I doing this to myself? I didn't want to accept the reality. The reality that I was not okay, that I did not have it under control. I just wanted my life to end. So I spent the next few months on bed rest, supervised by a team of doctors and nurses who might completely fooled. I mean, I was a terrible patient. I screamed, cried, hid my food, exercised in the shower, and even disconnected my feeding tube. I mean, at this point, I was so depressed, I didn't see my life getting any better. However, the only thing keeping me going was my family. They were the only ones who never once gave up on me and fought for my life when I could no longer fight for myself. I had put them through so much, and that's when I realized that the least I could do was recover for them. I remember falling asleep and praying to God that I would wake up the next morning because I just couldn't stand the thought of them having to deal with my death anymore. In June, I was taken straight from the hospital to the airport and my family and I traveled to Cape Town, South Africa. Upon my arrival, I was admitted straight into an inpatient facility specialized in depression, anxiety, self-harm, and eating disorders. I met so many other amazing teens who actually understood what I was going through and nobody ever judged me for who I was. We attended daily therapy sessions and workshops with specialized therapists and I was given a new treatment team who provided me with so much support. I remember in Panama, I was blamed for having an eating disorder, as if it was something I, would, I had chosen and was selfishly doing to myself. But my new doctors helped me realize that this was not a choice, it was not my fault, and that I was sick. After three weeks, I was discharged and went back home. The first two weeks were heavenly. I finally had energy again, and I remember feeling happiness for the first time in years. However, I had been trapped in a hospital for so long that being back in the real world was actually really scary. So unfortunately, I allowed the voice to come back into my head and once again, things quickly went downhill. In only a few days, I relapsed and I was immediately readmitted into a keso. The doctors then realized that the roots of my anorexia went down much further than they originally thought. This time, things were so much harder. I had been a prisoner of my own mind for so long that battling my thoughts every day was a constant battle. However, I had been given the opportunity to experience freedom and happiness, and this time I was sure of it. I wanted to live. I completed four more weeks of inpatient treatment, which were by far some of the most difficult weeks of my life, because I was forced to face all of the emotions that I had been bottling up for years. I was still too weak to take part in most of the activities offered by the clinic, so once again, I was put on bed rest. But I realized that I did not want to live like this. I did not want to be told that I was too weak to walk around or play soccer with my friends or even help carry the groceries. I literally wasn't allowed to do anything apart from eating and resting. But feeling this useless actually made me want to fight harder for my life. I didn't know who I was anymore. I had completely lost touch with myself but I wanted to give my sense, myself a chance to live and discover who Emma truly was. It has now been over a year since I have come back home and started my recovery. 
My road to recovery has not been a steady one, and I have been faced with so many challenges along the way. However, after a lifetime of battling my own mind, I no longer feel alone. Mental illnesses are such a taboo topic, which are so looked down upon by society. I mean, I have to admit myself, I was never educated upon the subject. For years, I was miserable and I was stuck in such a dark place, and I wish somebody would have told me that I would be okay, that I was not crazy, and that I was not alone. Up until recently, I had never told anyone that I struggled with mental health issues. I remember my best friend telling me that she knew I was an anorexic because she knew I would never do that to myself. But eating disorders are not a choice. Mental illnesses are serious, life-threatening diseases which take 8 million lives every year. Mental illnesses have no face and it is often the people that you least expected who are truly suffering. I wish I hadn't let it get this bad. I wish I'd gotten help earlier and I hadn't wasted my teenage years putting on a fake smile and hating myself. But that's the problem with today's society. You weren't taken seriously until you physically look sick. I was sick for years and people only started showing concern once there was barely anything left of me. I was only admitted to the hospital once I had lost over 20 kilos and my heart was on the verge of failing. Unfortunately, people still don't view physical health and mental health in the same way, and it can be so hard to ask for help due to this stigma. Myself, I had always been too ashamed and embarrassed of what people would think of me. Opening up is so scary, but I have realized there's no point in trying to hide my reality. The truth is, yes, I do suffer with anxiety, depression, and anorexia. But after going through hell, I have chosen to live. Chosen to get better, and I am putting absolutely all of my energy into my recovery, and I should not be ashamed of that. I want to reach out to anyone who might be struggling and say, please keep fighting and please accept help. You are so much stronger than you think, and I promise you, things will get better. I have been given a second chance at life, and I am so excited to discover everything my future holds. Thank you.